And all we needed was the business idea. Uh, and <laughs> all you needed was a business idea. Exactly. And <laughs> only that. <laughs> yeah, just this, that small manner of, uh, of needing something to do. And thus began this process, which went on for months of Reed and I kind of searching for a business idea. Okay. And we, we had a methodology, so don't, uh, don't think this is random. Um, and Reed and I happened to live in the same town. We lived in Santa Cruz, California together. And we had gotten in the habit many months earlier of commuting to work together. And so once we knew we were selling the company, once we knew we were losing our jobs, we still were commuting to work. But now the conversation in the car shifted. And what would happen is Reed would pick me up at my house and we'd barely be out of my driveway. And I'd go, okay, Reed, I've got one for you. Personalized shampoo. You're gonna cut off a lock of your hair. You're gonna mail it to us. And we're gonna have a team of hair scientists who are gonna formulate a custom blend and people are gonna to subscribe to it. And the same thing would happen no matter what I pitched is there'd be silence. Reed would be staring out the window, just steering the car. And you'd think he hadn't even heard me, but I knew that kind of behind that stoic face, all the calculations were taking place, like you know the risk and reward and the costs and the benefits. And it might take five minutes, 10 minutes of silence, but then eventually he would turn to me and go, that will never work. And he would lay into me with all the reasons, such a bad idea. But of course I could come prepared and I'd come right back at him with all the research I had done, all the reasons I was sure it was a good idea. And we would do one of these arguments all the way to the office. And if need be all the way home, and until we either decided there was promise or no promise. And almost all of the time, there was very, very little promise in these ideas. But next day, I'd have another one. I could okay, read personalized pet food, uh, custom sporting goods, vitamins. I mean, I pitched all those ideas. I pitched them one video rental by mail. People are gonna come to the website. They're gonna pick out a movie. We're gonna mail them the movie and they'll keep it for a week and then they'll mail it back. And at the time though, this was 1996, 97, uh, video rental, you may remember, it was on VHS cassettes. So they were too big and too heavy and too expensive. And so that idea got trashed exactly the same way that the dog food and the personalized shampoo did and kept on searching. And then the breakthrough, if there was one, came one morning where Reed picked me up and I'm on my way out the door, out, out the driveway. I got one for you. And he stops me and goes, I got to tell you about something I read about. There's this technology that came out. It's called the DVD. It's this little disc that holds a movie and it's thin and it's light. And we brainstormed that a little bit and realized this could be the unlock for that old video rental by mail idea we had talked about six or eight weeks ago. And then we did this quintessentially entrepreneurial thing, which is mid commute, we turned the car around and drove the car back into Santa Cruz to try and validate this idea. We did not go to the office and do a business plan. We did not work on a pitch deck. We tried to collide the idea with real people. That day? That day, mid commute turned the car around, went down into Santa Cruz, tried to buy a DVD, couldn't find one, settled for buying a used music CD, same size, same weight, then went two doors down and bought a little envelope that could put a greeting card in and put this CD in the envelope, addressed it to Reed's house, bought a stamp and dropped it in the mail and went to work. And that very next morning when Reed picked me up, he held up a little pink envelope with an unbroken CD in it that had gotten to his house in less than 24 hours for the price of a stamp. And that was probably the moment we said, this actually might work. We can use the post office. Um, and that shifted everything. And that's the point we began saying, this could be the idea that we do together. So many entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs are at that exact phase where they want to leave their corporate job 
their brain everywhere they go now because they're what they've wired themselves to be looking for an idea is finding lots of random ideas their dog will like throw up and they'll be like oh new dog food or whatever and they're going through that process and i i think it's so important to just pause there and try and interrogate what the framework is for knowing if you if you've got a winner or not like how do you, how did you cuz presumably you had got yourself passionate about the um shampoo idea so like how do you know when to drop an idea and how do you know when to commit to an idea what was the framework you're using the framework is that every idea is stupid there is everyone you know listen you probably haven't had a corporate job yet in your I know, <laughs> no thank god <laughs> yes thank god is right because there's this thing in corporate uh, i'll say corporate america but corporate world and it's the brainstorming session mm. and they put everyone in a conference room and they go, we're going to brainstorm and try and come up with an idea for whatever it is. And he goes, but first, some ground rules for the brainstorming. Rule number one, there is no such thing as a bad idea. And I call bullshit. There's plenty of bad ideas. In fact, there's no such thing as a good idea. Every idea is bad. We just don't know why they're bad yet. And so the framework I approach, I assume all these ideas are ridiculous. I assume none of them are going to work. But here's the difference. The reason I start from that, that uh, position is I don't wanna commit the single worst thing you can do as an entrepreneur, which is fall in love with your idea. And you talk about the person who sees the dog throwing up and they go, I've got a great idea. And then what happens? Nothing, they go home and they go, this is a great idea. And they tell their partner and their partner goes, oh, that's brilliant, I'd buy that. And so they go, okay. And they begin working on a business plan and they write this 10 page business plan and they're dreaming about how, they're going, they're, how amazing it's gonna be. Just think about when we have this line of, we can do cats too and then giraffes. And, you know, they've, they've built this incredibly ornate business in their head, all based on this feeling that this must be a good idea. And you've got to nip that in the bud. And the way you nip it in the bud is you try, rather than dreaming how amazing this idea is, the first thing you think about, the only thing you think about is how can I quickly, cheaply, and easily collide this idea with a real person and find out is it in fact a good idea or a bad idea? How can I do some kind of hack that will allow me to quickly find out whether customers actually would want this or not. And almost always you build this quick, cheap, down and dirty, I don't mean minimal viable product, I mean unviable. Something you can quickly do, like turn the car around and mail a CD to yourself, just to find out the, or the basic premise of can I actually use the US mail to send movies back and forth? Because if that had failed, well, great, on to the next one. And that's such a critical, critical step. That's the framework that everyone has to have. It is not about having a good idea. Having ideas is easy and trivial. The important thing is how clever can you be to come up with a quick and cheap and easy way to test it? Why? Because I know you and me understand this, but I didn't understand this when I started my career. So I know that there's a lot of people listening right now that are probably right in the moment you've described. They've spent a year building up this thing in their bedroom. <laughs> For anyone that can't see, he's got his head in his hands. Um, they've spent a year in their bedroom building and working on this project. Why is that a terrible idea? It's such a waste of time because what happens is two things happen. One is this idea becomes so large and ornate and complicated in your head that you go, okay, Mark, I didn't need to get started. I need to raise $5 million because it's going to have to hire all these people to, to build this thing. And they're probably building the absolutely the wrong thing. Uh, you, you, can't, you, you can't just go ahead and based on what you think is going to happen. You've got to start from a position of real information. Listen, perhaps the cleanest way since we have a bit of time is to give you an example. I do a lot of work with university students. And uh, I was meeting with a young woman who, uh, at the university and she goes, okay, Mark, I've got this idea. Um, what I wanna do is peer-to-peer -peer clothing sharing. In other words, I've got all this clothing in my closet that I never wear, 
or I don't wear very often. And I know my friends have a lot of clothing in their closet and other friends have clothes in their closet. It'd be great if we had this website and we could all post what we have and we could borrow each other's clothes. And, and I'm going, okay, that's interesting. What can I help you with? She goes, I'm trying to figure out, should I drop out of college to do this? Uh, how do I raise the money to hire a team to build this for me? And I went, whoa, you know, slow down here. Okay, interesting idea. But let's figure out if we can come up with a quick and cheap and easy way to collide this idea with reality. And I said, do you have a piece of paper? She goes, yes, smart ass. I'm a college student, I have a piece of paper. I go, great. All right, do you have a magic a marker? She goes, I have a marker, do you have a piece of tape? She goes, got a piece of tape. I go, all right, I want you to write on the piece of paper, would you like to borrow my clothes? Knock. And I want you to tape that to the outside of your dormitory room. And we're gonna find out in the next 24 hours whether the very, very first principle behind your idea is real. Is anyone gonna knock? Because if nobody knocks, well, you've learned something very important right there. This thing you think is so attractive might not be, but let's, let's be optimistic. Let's assume a bunch of people knock. Great, you've learned something, but you're also gonna learn the next thing, which is, are there problems with fit? Are there problems with style? Are the people who knock and look at your clothes actually gonna want any of them? All right, let's be even more optimistic. Let's say they do find out ones they wanna borrow. Well, you're gonna find out the next piece. How do you feel when your favorite blouse comes back stained or torn? You're gonna find out about the cost of doing dry cleaning. You're gonna find out all of these things and you're gonna find about all of this for a piece of, with a piece of paper, a tape, and a marker. None of this raising money, dropping out of school, and doing any coding, you're gonna do something very simple. Now, is this scalable? No. Is this repeatable? No but that's fine. You're gonna do it all with three by five cards or on a pad. You're gonna do it manually and you're gonna start losing your mind. But when you finally get to the point where you are ready to go and maybe raise money or drop out of school, you're gonna know what you're dropping out of school for. You're gonna know what you're raising money for. You're gonna be able to tell someone, here's my acquisition cost, here's my lifetime value, here's my CAC, here's my, you're gonna know all of these metrics. You're gonna know the complexity. You're gonna have tried all these different things. You're gonna know what demographic, and you found out all of that for nothing except for your time. That's what I mean by figure out some way to validation hack. And that is the key to being an entrepreneur. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.